guys, so we have the uh, all of the engine components rigged up to the Spintron that we ran actually on the dyno. Now traditionally we usually do it the other way around. We like to Spintron our stuff and make sure it's all good and then run it on the dyno, but because of the way the program went down, that's what we got. We had an engine, we ran it, and uh, we, we ran all the way to the RPM where it was misfiring on the dyno, and I was pretty sure it was misfiring because the valves were floating. Um, but today we're going to run it up to about 8,500 or so and verify that. And uh, so we'll, we'll run this thing and then we'll take a look at the data and analyze from there and see if we're right. So here we go. Okay. And sure enough, we can see it even in real time before we go back to analyze it. We can see that it was for sure lofting over the nose and bouncing off the seat. So we'll zoom in here and have a look here in just a second. Okay, so we're going to go through and take a little analysis here of what we see. Um, what we're looking at here with this purple trace is our valve motion uh, at 700 RPM, just so we have a place to start from. And then you can see that as we ramp up here on the dyno, it's not really dyno, it's the Spintron, but we simulate our dyno run here. I can zoom in a little bit and drag this over to kind of fill our screen. We ramp from that 700 mark all the way up to about 8,000 RPM. So what we did was we made the starting uh, valve trace here kind of our, our standard, our zero, if you will, and our, uh, use that as a reference. So as we go up in RPM, we start to see a number of things happening. Um, notice that we see a little bit less lift here at the start of the run. That's from the compressive deflection, the bending of the push rod, the rocker arm, the bolts that are holding the rocker arms into the cylinder head and so on and so forth. Anything in the system that's moving and not transmitting the camshaft information to the valve is because of that bending and deflection. But what happens is at some point, all that energy gets stored like in a diving board and it comes back and you can see we're now starting to toss the a valve higher than the camshaft is asking us to. That's what we call lift or loft. And so that's what I'm showing here with this blue line is the maximum lift that we saw in any given place uh, during the run. So you can see here it starts out at about 629.89. So let's call that 630 valve lift. And it basically hovers around that 630 mark, 629, 635, 628. You know, you have a little bit of data scatter there, but for the most part, uh, 630 lift right up until the time we get to about uh, 5200 RPM, then all of a sudden we start to see it gain a little bit more lift and it comes to a peak here at about 6000 RPM. We're getting about eight thou of loft there from this compressive bending and deflection and then it goes back down. By 6800 it's happy again. But notice all of a sudden like a light switch things are starting to go bad as we add more RPM you get more deflection and bending and we get more acceleration and velocity going up the curve here. So all of a sudden we start getting a ton of uh, loft over the nose. And that's not good because what happens is we get all this extra lift and it comes back down and it wants to crash here as the valve comes back to the seat. And I'll just rearrange this lift so you can see it a little better. There you go. And now we can see it hits the seat and comes right back off. And that's not good because that's all during our compression phase when the piston's trying to help us make power. Here we go. So now you can see it comes down, slams onto the seat. Next thing you know, it's bouncing right back open. We're getting about 12, uh, a little more than 12, about 15 thousandths of actual bounce off the seat there. So um, that's not really good for making power as that uh, compression ratio is trying to build pressure in the cylinder and we got the valve hanging back open. Eh, not really a good thing. So. Pretty clear that it was in fact out of control, so it's nice to have that validation. Uh, but now what we gotta do is we gotta go fix it. So we're gonna play around with the rocker setup, the push rods, uh, how much lash is in the system, probably even change the shape of the cam lobe a little bit because you know how I feel about RPM. If some is good, more is better. So we're gonna see if we can find some.
All right, so we're doing a little experiment here in uh, measuring the deflection or the amount of bending or loss that we're getting in our system. So what we did is we ran the engine and found the maximum RPM that we could or should be running it based on the data that tells us when they're getting so much loft and so much bounce that the engine wouldn't run well anymore. And that turned out to be about 8150 or 8200, which corresponds nicely to what we saw on the dyno. And we thought or suspected it might actually be floating the valves because of the way it was running and misfiring. So it corresponds really nicely to that. So since we know that there's bending and deflection in the system, what we decided to do is order new push rods of the identical length, however, of a heavier wall thickness. We're hoping that a lot of the loss in the system is the bending of the push rod on the opening and closing side. So what we did is we ran the engine to collect that data and we compared the amount of duration the camshaft has at the same spot. So for example, at 50 thou lift on the lobe or roughly 90 at the valve. And we can see right now that from 1000 RPM to 8100 or 8400 right in there where it was bouncing really bad, we're losing about five degrees of actual duration from our camshaft. So what we're hoping to see is that we run the engine with a heavier, stiffer pushrod and we get some of that back. The pushrod may not be the only place the system's actually losing, but if we can find some of it, we'll be happy and that'll be a good thing. So come along and we'll give it a shot. Here we go. So the first thing that I noticed is it was still bouncing pretty well there at 84, 8500, but notwithstanding that, let's come over here and look at what our duration was at our measured spot, which was 90 thou of valve lift. The reason we picked 90 thou is it has a 1.8 rocker ratio. So 50 thou is that they typically publish the duration numbers for our cam card. So 50 times 1.8 would be 90. So what we had before, let me find our spot here. What we have here is 250 degrees exactly compared to 248.4. So picked up about 1.6 extra degrees of duration. Our camshaft got bigger because our loss got smaller at a thousand, uh, actually that's at 334 RPM. So now what I'm gonna do is move over here to the top at 8420, 8410 it looks like, find that same spot. So what we had last time was 248.4. And what we have this time it looks like Believe it or not, we actually have less again, 245.7. For whatever reason, our duration actually got less, so I don't know what that means yet. Maybe our stiffer pushrod transferred the bending to somewhere else in the system, but clearly, even if I pick another little spot at the same RPM here on a different cycle, let's see if that works out to be about the same. Go down and find our 90 point. And yep, 245. Very small changes here. 245.6. So definitely, now what we're going to do is we did the A, now we've done the B. So we want to go back to A and make sure that all makes sense and, and does what we think it did. But if that is the case, then what it means is the push rod really wasn't the culprit. We just made that part of the system stronger, which transferred the energy somewhere else in the system. So we're going to learn. Stay tuned. Well, all right, guys, we've learned a ton today. Um, we really uh, have been searching and trying to be as fair as we could to the data, doing runs in the A configuration and then switching to B and then going back to A just to make sure that what we're seeing is, is true and valid. And, uh, you know, we really thought by putting a heavier wall pushrod in this thing, it was going to 
diminish a bunch of that deflection on the opening side and then maybe help the balance on the backside. But no matter what we did, it did not respond to the push rod change. We tried with more lash and less lash and heavier wall push rods and thinner wall push rods and that just isn't where the problem is. And so we're gonna keep digging and try to hunt down where the biggest problems areas are. And when we find out, we're gonna learn. And when we learn, then you learn. So stick around and we'll get back to you when we learn more. What a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not gonna listen.